Hey, welcome back to another edition of Ego on Break. I'm your host, Dynamite J. Andrews. Got the Mississippi Madman sitting to my left. And today we're going to do a little something different. We're not going to talk AEW Dark. We're not talking MLW. We're going to talk Ring of Honor and their pure uh, tournament for the pure championship. Uh, it's been a heck of a tournament. Uh, a lot of guys there, a few guys that uh, we know. Um, but overall, it has been phenomenal from my standpoint. Oh, yeah, it's made me actually want to watch wrestling. Absolutely. Um, AEW made me want to turn it off. WWE <laughs> made me want to turn it off. Uh, I've I've made a uh, an effort to go out of my way to watch the whole tournament. Um, I started a couple weeks back and then skipped like a week or two. But I finally caught up in the last day or so, and uh, it's it's been great. So we'll run down who's in it, and then run down the matches, and then. Like I said, you started well, you started almost at the beginning. I didn't know where it started. Yeah. And I've only seen three shows, but what I saw was okay. great. So well, uh, you'll have to tell more than I know. The way they're doing it is they've done it in uh, like a block A and a block B. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think it had 16, let's see, four, eight, yeah, 16 wrestlers. Uh, it had Jay Lethal, Dalton Castle, uh, David Finley. Yep. Rocky Romero, Silas Young, Fred Yehi, Tracy Williams, Russ Taylor, uh, Jonathan Gresham, Wheeler Yuta, Delirious, Matt Seidel, uh, Josh Woods, Kenny King, PJ Black, and Tony Deppin. Uh, a lot of these guys have been in Ring of Honor. Yep. Uh, a few of these guys, this is their debut. And uh, for the ones that made their debut or have only wrestled there maybe once or twice, uh, I believe I they, they all kind of like dark shows, kind of. I think so. Or just came in, you know, for a, you know to get beat or something. Um, but all the guys that are not under contract really impressed me. Um, I'm hoping to see some of these guys stick around. Uh, Ego alumni uh, Fred Yehi was probably the guy I was rooting for the most. Me too. He's one I went out of my way to find all his matches, and uh, he definitely. Uh, made a great impression yeah. if uh if they're gonna pick somebody up based off this tournament i think he would be a uh, a great pickup from everything i've um, seen i think he did the best because he definitely put his working shoes on yep. and uh, showed out while he was there um it was cool because at one point they were like uh um, cedric not cedric um you watched blank. more than i did brother so uh, i don't know Caprice Coleman, Caprice, that's what I was thinking uh, about. Okay, yeah. uh, Nick, Nick named him like the upset kid, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. And said uh, like he's gonna take him to Upset City or something. <laughs> so like it was pretty cool. Like you know that might be a character somewhere. Like somebody needs no to steal kidding. that. You know the upset kid and always be at uh, at the disadvantage. But uh, first round, and this is the the episode that I saw a couple weeks ago. This was Jay Lethal and Dalton Castle. Yeah, I've seen that match. And uh, the second match was uh, David Finley and Rocky Romero. That's the first two. Both of these matches had um, had a history, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. uh, Dalton Castle and Jay Lethal had, a, you know, they fought over the uh, heavyweight title, and then uh, Finley and Romero were in New Japan together. And I believe the story went like David Finley was uh, the young boy to Rocky Romero, and like yeah, had to do his laundry and that kind of stuff. So, uh, pretty cool to have that type of stuff. Jay Lethal and Dalton Castle, for me, I felt like the match was just a little flat. Like, I think I just expected more. I'm not that huge on um, Dalton Castle. He, to me, he loses after entrance. I, I like Dalton. He's a like brawler. One of the things I liked a lot about this was how they legitimized every guy in the tournament with a video. Uh they told like you know their background and what they had done and why they had actually been here and like almost all these guys came from like an amateur wrestling background mm -hmm. or some type of uh mma training and that kind of thing um but yeah this uh this match with the dalton castle and jay Luth, i just thought was a little iffy but i think the reason it was a little iffy is because it was the first match they wanted to kind of just establish what the rules were mm -hmm. Uh, you know, three rope breaks, twenty count, outside. twenty count outside, no interference, must adhere to the handshake, um, no punching to the face. You got one warning, and then next you would be disqualified. 
Um, and the cool thing I think they added was like if anyone outside the match interfered, they'd be fired on the spot. So really? I thought I that was really that. cool. Yeah. So you know if you're in a line with somebody or whatever, and they came out, they'd been fired on the spot. Like you gotta. I know they said Silas was like. He had to be like a second. Or yeah, something. he got licensed to be yeah, like a that's second. That's what it was. That's what it um, was. And I like the fact that they used second, not manager. Yeah. Um, it just helped legitimize. Well, I mean, they're tag partners. So, yeah, know. but it just helped legitimize yeah. it, you know, a little more. Um, but overall, it was good. Jay Lethal came out on top, and uh, I believe he hit the uh, little handspring cutter. Um, so that was pretty cool. It went. It helped establish that because it would come into play later on. Uh, second match was Rocky Romero versus David Finley, and I don't remember a whole bunch about this match. I don't either, to be honest. Um, but I do know that David Finley came out on top. Um, oh, I do. Rocky, right off the bat, Rocky's like, my game plan is pretty much straightforward. I'm going for the arm bar. I've mastered the the uh, arm bar. I can hit that arm bar from 50 different ways. Maybe it like, was. It's about a month I'm, ago since I'm coming I in stuff. for the the arm bar, and right off the bat, right from the lockup. I mean, they locked up. He went straight to the arm bar. He did. That's right. I and uh, it was really cool. But at the end, Finley came out on top. Yeah. I don't remember the finish. I don't either. Um, but I, I enjoyed the match. Uh, once I thought about, it. I wish I had went and rewatched it. Just to kind of have it because when I saw fresh Finley, on my mind. I didn't recognize him because of Japan. He had long hair yeah. and everything, and I was like, "Who the hell is this guy?" Yeah. And I thought it was cool because, uh, like, he was either Caprice or or uh, Ian Riccoboni or no, it wasn't. It was a Cornet. I had listened to Jim Cornet, and the guy with Cornet said I was surprised they didn't have a British accent. And Cornet's like, "Well, he's lived here for you know yes. twenty years of his life, whatever you know, other than his first one or two years of being uh, alive." Even Finley's know. isn't that strong as long as right. he's been here. Uh, but it was cool because uh, they had said that Finley. I mean, yeah, that uh, Finley was born in Germany. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not even British. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was the first episode, a solid, solid episode. Like I said, I really enjoyed the uh, the breakdowns of introducing everybody and letting you know these guys are legit. Yes, they're in sports entertainment, but they are pro wrestlers. They are pro fighters. They are legit. Um, second episode, I saw, saw Silas Young and Fred Yehi. Again, talked about where they came from and stuff, and that was all really cool. Um and again, you know, I shadowed it earlier, but the upset of the day, you know, Fred yeah, Yehi beat yeah. Silas Young, and I mean, I got super excited. Didn't Silas do like a bridge to a standing up position from under him? Yeah, he bridged up and then turned it into a roll That's up, which was, was really yeah. cool. Uh, definitely a highlight of that, just because you don't expect What's to see that from him. Silas is one of those guys, you see him as a brawler, but he really knows yep. way yep. more than he's ever showed. Um but solid, solid match. Yeah, Fred, there. like, turned it on. Earned Silas's respect. Silas was like, you know what? I'm a real man, but you beat me, so you must, you're a real man, too. Like, uh, it was cool. Uh, Tracy Williams and Russ Taylor, this one was super surprising for me. I didn't fine. expect a lot from Russ Taylor. I hadn't seen a whole bunch of his stuff. Um, I will say, dude's in phenomenal shape. Um, and I hadn't seen a whole lot of Tracy Williams in the past. I've seen a little bit. Yeah, he was always in a tag stuff, I'd say. But uh, this match was phenomenal. Glad and it was way. like a shoulder guard, yep. right? Because yep. he isn't wearing it no more. Yeah, and the story is he had had a shoulder injury and never took off time. And with uh, COVID, he finally you. had yeah. time for the injury to heal. And now they're working it over again. Yep. So, yay. But uh, Russ Taylor was one of the fighting Taylor boys from Pro Wrestling Gorilla. You may know his uh, brothers, uh, Chuck Taylor and Brian Cage Taylor. Uh, um, okay. So, <laughs> you know, he's in good company, I guess you could say. But uh, kind of like pine tree and oak tree, huh? yeah, not a damn thing so, to each other. But they got trees in the last thing. Uh, solid, solid match. Tracy Williams uh, won this match as well, and uh, that kicked off. You know what he won it was? I just I think it, the cross, the cross no, he had power driver, was and then it? okay, they said power driver been, cro uh, cross face. They said he had the power driver never match from stuff I've been listening to, uh, and saying. it was such cool because like. When you hear people say, oh, you need a finisher, you can hit out of nowhere, and you don't think pile driver. Quick, bro. Man, this came yeah. out of nowhere. Like, they were chain wrestling, and all of a sudden, pile driver. I like, think I saw it in a highlight. Um, I mean, it was it was phenomenal. I haven't seen the match yet. Um, but, yeah, that was super good. Uh, next episode was Jonathan Gresham, Wheeler Yuta. 
this was a cool uh, match for me. I'm a big fan of Yuta and Gresham. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this match was the finish. Um, I, I said the same thing about the last one. So. What had happened was Gresham basically was just like uh, smashing his knee on the mat until he tapped out. I saw that in the highlight today. And the, and the only thing, I think the one thing that, that just really took me out of it, and when you're watching this, you can understand because you get caught up in all, like, why they put their feet somewhere, why they put their hand. But Wheeler's other leg was free, and all it would have took was Gresham just to loop his foot, like yeah. his leg, over that leg to trap it down. Sometimes them little bitty things. And, and now, normally that wouldn't matter, but the fact that this whole tournament has been based on little things... You know, that just for me was like, ah, you missed this. But I guess yeah. it didn't matter because he made him tap out. Um, but I know a lot of people were comparing it to Brian Danielson. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Delirious and Matt Seidel, for me, stole the show. I'm um, going to go find that one. And just because it took me from 2020 to 2015 or 2014, <laughs> well, I mean, uh, 2004, 2005, whatever. Yeah. Because I that's how far I've been a fan of Ring of Honor and in that match like they brought that early 2000s style to the match even though these guys are a lot older you know they're not as active as they once was Seidel even said in his thing that um, he had had an injury a foot injury and actually now walks with a limp because of it Um, but he says the one thing it's done was it's built a, a solid callus part of his bone on top of his foot which stops his foot from like going up yeah. and down like it should but at the same time it made his kick harder so he can sacrifice his pain to hurt you um he's like when i use it it kills me but it also kills you um so that was pretty cool so it's kind of like brian pill when he got injured remember he couldn't right okay um and then to still see him doing oh, springboards no. and stuff is amazing. I realized when I started watching some of his matches lately, I was like, he's way more technical than he ever was before. But uh, Seidel won this, and I will tell you there is a move in this match that Seidel does to look too delirious. And when you see it, you're like, how did delirious not like lose the use of his <laughs> legs? Somehow, right. I think it was a suplex or he got punt. He Something happened where Delirious basically folded, laying backwards with his legs under him. So, like, all you saw was, like, knees and body. And Seidel did, like, a corkscrew splash on top of that. So how he didn't end up like the guy who jumped off the second rope and break both legs, I have no idea because it's the most painful thing in the whole tournament. And how Delirious is not in a wheelchair right now, I have no idea. Because that would have broke normal people's legs, but Delirious is not normal. No. Uh, the cool thing, and you didn't see this, but are you know, like they're doing these sit downs, kind of building up everybody. Well, they did one for Delirious as well. They actually talk. As you know, Delirious is not coherent. No, he always blah 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 tackle Bill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did. He did that, but in a very serious tone and cadence, and they use subtitles. As if his language was an actual real language Speaking that could be, language. you know, that could be deciphered and translated into English. Um, so it was a little bit of comedy, but it was so well done. And you could, like, it was his mannerism stuff was he was so serious. And so, like, his body language stuff matched the text that they were putting on the bottom. Phenomenally done. Um, so good. Um, but again, like I say, Sidell won that. And then next episode, we get Josh Woods, who's uh, with Silas Young versus Kenny King. And uh, this was the only match that didn't have a finish, so to speak. Uh, because time it, limit draw. Time limit draw. And they had ref, uh, they had uh, judges. With Kenny King? Hmm? With King? Okay. They had judges. And the match was solid. Like, it wasn't yeah, bad. I, I and it told the story. Kenny like, Kenny King got a, uh, a punch in. Like, Josh went to punch thought oh crap the rules put his punch on when he did Kenny blasted him boom and took the warning because of course Kenny's a bad guy um, but when it come down to the referee's decision that was what lost the match for Kenny was the fact that he had to punch and Josh would so they actually made the name so something they, they did, and it was the best match to do it with because it kept Kenny because Kenny's 
a main heel there. Yeah, so know. it kept him, but it also put over the fact that Josh is this MMA guy. And he thought and about this it. is normal. Well, you know, yeah. that, that kind of finish is a normal finish in MMA where the, it comes down to referees or judges' decision. So to use it there was perfect. I mean, it couldn't have been used better. And then uh, the last of the finals or the, the uh, opening round matches was P.J. Black and Tony Deppin. And Tony Deppin's a guy that a lot of people don't know, but he mm -hmm. came from Chikara. That's where I know him from, um, right? The kind of the last few days of Chikara. But he was the only guy that came in and says, I was not an athlete. I didn't play sports. I, don't, I didn't wrestle, but I was a skateboarder. I was a punk kid. I was used to falling down, getting back up. I was used to like hurting myself and having to get back up. You know, uh, the DIY, the punk style, you know, his DIY got do it yourself because I had to do it. And he said, what do skateboard kids do for fun? They wrestle around and box and punch each other for fun because that's what we do. He was like, so my background isn't is I'm gonna come in and be the most athletic guy. I'm not gonna come in, you know, and do whatever he's, but I'm the guy that's gonna get hurt and get back up. I'm gonna, you're gonna knock me down and I'm gonna get back up because that's what we do. And they told that story of the match, and it's phenomenal. Like, definitely watch that match. Um, it'll really surprise you of how good that match was. So that was first round. Um, in, did you see any of those first round matches? Uh, well, I know the you saw first the, match, the first show. The first show, and then you uh, saw the uh, Silas and Fred Yehi. and Fred Yehi when I'm away to find it. So overall, was there... Out of the ones you did see, I would pick Fred and Silas by yeah. far as the, the match to go watch. That was definitely go watch. I say that when I say the PJ, I say go watch the whole tournament. I mean, yeah. I can't tell. There's nothing bad I can say about mm -hmm. this whole tournament. Um, so we move on to the semifinals. We get Jay Lethal and David Finley. Um, you want to talk about that match? Did That's you see that? what I haven't seen. Okay, you I, haven't seen I, that. I started to show after. This is a really cool match. Um, it told the story of Lethal using being able to hit that cutter and base if he hit the cutter it was over. Yeah. And uh he hit it on Finley, Finley got a rope break, which is super cool. But it was the that was kind of his last of the rope breaks. Uh, or I think. Maybe not. I don't remember. But uh I know that happened, so that was pretty cool. Um but overall it was a solid match. Um and then we got um Yeha and Tracy Williams. Again, Yeha put the working boots I on. I saw that one. Had a heck of a match. Um, but as soon because I that's where I started off. Besides okay. first show, I didn't realize that you know the whole rope break thing was going to be three limits. Right. And once I learned that, I called the finish. I was like, well, Williams is going to tie yeah. up Yeha. Now sure Williams did. did the same thing to yeah. Russ Taylor. Okay. Yeah. But it makes sense. You got yeah. all this leverage, and you're just screwed. He pushed them to using their yeah. rope breaks yeah, every time. He did. But, uh, I mean, phenomenal match. Yeah, weren't they another uh, – they were actual team and Evolve. Evolve. Right? They were part of Catch Point. Okay, and they did the whole yeah. handshake thing, and I so, thought that was really cool. Uh, very cool, very cool. But they beat the shit out of you. Yes, they did. I mean, yeah, that was a <laughs> hard-hitting, <laughs> stiff match. They did that. Uh, Gresham and Sidell was really cool. Yeah. Definitely a size difference in these guys. Sidell is huge compared to Gresham, um, but Gresham is a, is a worker. I mean, he's a get his hands on you, take you down, bring you down on the mat. You know, when you're down low, you know we're all the same size. And uh, Gresham beat Sidell, and I was surprised. Okay. Uh, I I. I, I I was rooting for Gresham, but I was surprised that he beat Sidell. I figured Sidell would come down to the end, and a young guy would beat Sidell. Um, I really, the way they booked it, I thought it would come down between Lethal and somebody. Yeah. Or Gresham and somebody. And I was right yeah. at one point. I wasn't right all the way, <laughs> but at one point. Um, but Gresham did win. And uh, then we get uh, Josh Woods versus PJ Black. Mm -hmm. This was super cool with Woods getting the win. Uh, ankle lock of some kind, wasn't it? I think so. And it was cool because the story, uh, PJ was like, you know what? I, I got you. You you know, you got me. Uh, it was a lot of respect in this match, in mm -hmm. this whole tournament, which is part of being the pure, you know, champion. Um, I mean, it's feuds, but it's not like storyline. You stole my girlfriend. Right, feuds. right. Um, that takes us to the last uh, rounds before we get to, a, to the finals. And we get uh, Jay Lethal, who was Jonathan Gresham's partner, 
and Tracy Williams. And this was really good. Um, both guys, by this point, everybody's got an injury. No, they're yeah. all messed up. <laughs> uh, and, well, my shoulder, my neck. Yeah. Um, but Tracy Williams beat Jay Lethal, which was very cool. And that match is definitely back and forth. You don't know who's going to win there right. until the very end. Right. Uh, Gresham and Woods was the other round. And uh, this was, again, super good match. Uh, I love this because Gresham kept getting, like, upset. And, like, you know, he's like, oh, I'm not on my game. Like, this injury's got me. But super cool match with Gresham pulling out the wind. So our finals, which should be next week's episode, would be uh, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams versus Jonathan Gresham. So no matter who wins, it's a win, you I know. Hope so. um, like I said, Woods, man, he tossed poor little Gresham around like a damn sack of potatoes. Absolutely. I mean, he was suplexing that poor bastard <laughs> all over the place. And it wasn't just Brock Lesnar Germans. Like, yeah. It was belly to he belly. He was good wrenching into there. there to everything. Is. Oh, like, poor day. Well, this was such a solid uh, tournament. It makes me, uh, you know, regret not being able to have the Southern 8 this year because of how good it is. Um, it did inspire me a little bit to maybe try to maybe do a tournament with our Styles title. Um, right now, Ray Fury holds that championship, but it'd be cool to maybe do a tournament based around that where maybe he gets a buy all the way to the end or something and everybody else has to work up to him or something and showcase their styles. So maybe do something like that down the line. But uh, definitely such a cool idea. Um, we as the, as the episodes progressed, we got some introductions of people and got to see other people not in the tournament. Um, uh, Matt, I don't even remember, like, why did the belt, they entered, Brian combined Danielson the belts, combined it, yeah. Yeah, that's right. It's him and Doug Williams. Yeah. So, um, I still don't, to this day, I don't understand why they did it. It was a good belt. I think why it was it just before it's time. Like, that Maybe. style was there, but it just wasn't catching on like they wanted to. And I think in today's landscape, that style is going to flourish. Yeah, imagine um, they still had Thatcher and people like, you know, mm -hmm. a couple other guys. I mean, but one thing I'll say about the virus, look at what it gave a lot of yep. guys that people didn't know who the hell they were. That's it. An opportunity. That's it. Um, but we got to see uh, Vinny or Vincent. Yeah, um, so I could have done without that. I, dug, on. I hate all the stuff. I dug the promo that he did. Um, but we got to see the return of Matt Taven, and I ha yeah. I'm not caught up. So the stuff they were doing, I didn't know anything about. I didn't either until um, today. We got to see uh, EC3 debut, and he cut a heck of a promo. Him and Taylor. Uh, Shane Taylor, yeah. which is cool. A uh, little bit of... Uh, um, some that things that just dude, happened. But, mm -hmm. um, our buddy O'Shea Edwards, former uh, Pro Wrestling Ego champion, just received a package from Shane Taylor. Says, hey, I see you're hungry. I see you're, uh, what you're doing. I like it. I just don't like what you're wearing. Here's some money for hard times. Send him 10 Gs and a uh, Shane Taylor uh uh, promotions or whatever mm -hmm. sweatshirt which is what all of Shane Taylor's guys are wearing so look for O'Shea Edwards to be a kaiju for Shane Taylor uh, there you go okay. so uh, super cool for our friend O'Shea uh, couldn't happen to a harder working dude and uh, happy to see that there's going to be something at least in the near future with him and Shane Taylor and uh, That's cool. you know it just shows you when you when you put your mind to something, you know, you uh, O'Shea said he's going to do it until he get Mama Bentley and he's a, or a Beamer or whatever. <laughs> you know, that's what Mama wanted. Car, yeah, go. Mama wanted a car, so he's going to he's gonna fight and wrestle until he gets her a car. So uh, with Shane Taylor dropping 10 Gs, I'm sure he's close to, uh, no, no, you know, I'll getting that. A car for 10 Gs. <laughs> I don't know if Mama's going to get what she wants for mm -hmm. 10 Gs, but he definitely got a down payment, you know. Um, so very cool for that. I was excited to see EC3 there. I mean, that's a and little... With, but he, him being with the... The Briscoes? Briscoes is a little off. Yeah, I think it was just, let's just make something happen yeah, kind of deal. Um, but I, I dig the fact, like... Well, he does got a mustache. I'm yeah. Sure. I'd hope to see him maybe show up in MLW and uh, take MJF's place, but I'm cool to see him there. Like, it's still possible because a lot of those guys are working more yeah. for promotion. It's just cool to see him at Ring of Honor. Like, I don't know why, but it just is, you know. I was going to ask you, during this tournament with no 
crowd did it bother you at all like this one it didn't bother it me. did not bother me and i think the reason it didn't because the in shivani and Col um i mean caprice they caprice did a great job of covering but they wasn't me. over here telling stories and, and they weren't advertising and you know you know hawking pay-per-views and stuff they were literally focusing on yeah. what was happening in the ring and they even put over fact, hey, no fans is gonna, you know, could affect people, but it also could help people I because they don't it. have to lose their focus. Yeah. But they don't get that second win when the crowd picks up or whatever. So they use no crowd to their advantage. And they were keeping in the ring with the camera work. Yep, they wasn't going all over the building and showing nobody yeah, there. Just, and, I've seen them do a lot of right compared to what others are doing yep. wrong. Like they done so much right for me in this tournament when the Vinny thing, when they got the promo and when. Uh, Matt Taven, I'm like, no, you're ruining it. Like, uh, like they had took me so far away from I sports agree. entertainment I, I agree that I hated when it came back in I there. Too. But and, I mean, I understand and, they have to. to the you know, I'm like, do something, Reginald. Do this swan son of a bitch. I'm like, just do something. The coolest your own. part about that was he, like, when he when he hit and he's selling, he's laughing. He goes, see, I'll, nobody can hurt me more than I hurt yeah. me. So I mean. His character to me is a little cool. I'm interested to see what's going to happen. He's more than just the dude coming to the ring with the balloon. And uh, I'm excited to see what it goes. But I'm glad they're introducing a little more because, you know, next week this tournament's well, over. Totally, so yeah. they, they got to go into something else. Something. Right. I agree. But it's just I've enjoyed that so yep, much. I definitely enjoyed it. But uh, this has been our review of, or at least us spoiling. I don't know how much we reviewed it, but we definitely spoiled the... Uh, the tournament gets you up to date, get you caught up, get you prepared for next week. It's older for me. I ain't watched it all. And so. uh, I mean, you don't know who the hell's gonna win. Dude is so good. Who do you think will win? I'm saying. <laughs> I want to say Gresham. I think Williams though, honestly. And the reason I say Gresham is because he's they've kind of put he's the flag bearer. They've come compared him to Brian Daniels and all that I think are gonna go on the other way. side <laughs> I think it would be smarter for Tracy because Gresham's a tag t champion right now uh, my only thought would be if he they win if he wins this I could see them losing the tag belt soon so who knows I, I'm just picking Williams. I mean I can there's a there's I'm a not, I'm a big Gresham fan but I really think they're gonna go with Williams. there's a reason for Gresham there's a reason for Williams mm -hmm. to win on the flip side there's a reason for Gresham and a reason for Williams not to win that's why I was so I picked yeah I was hoping he'd go all the way <laughs> just because he's our guy you know but, um but overall man like super good and no matter who wins I'm looking forward to the first title defense because I'm curious, are they going to defend it against someone that was in the tournament maybe they didn't face? Or will it be some completely different person step up? Never know. So, uh, I'm just happy that, you know, Ring of Honor is putting wrestling back in wrestling. Like, yeah, how dare them. So, uh, definitely definitely brought me back into the fold funny, to, to the, watch. The one wrestling company doesn't have wrestling in the title, yeah. really. Yet, they're the one concentrating on wrestling. Yeah, so... Uh, with that statement, till next time, watch wrestling. Watch wrestling.